Sí.
Okay everyone, so today, as, you, as you've noticed, I've been cleaning up the garden. As I just um, explained at the start of the video. So I'm just going to show you guys what I've been doing. So, I've had a mouse, a rat, or a foal, or something um, going underneath my trellis there. The trellis that you see there isn't fixed on the ground. Uh, it's only fixed on the wall, on the stone wall. Um, <clears throat> Just a second. Uh, okay, yes. So it's uh, secured on the on the wall there, the trellis. Um, most of the produce in the garden is dying down now, but then. I've come up to the garden today because before, um, I would say around about September, uh, the middle of September, um, the courgette was okay. If all the courgette uh, is doing great. I've got a lot of tomatoes that are also doing great. I've got a lot of salad leaves um, beets, Swiss chard, spinach, um, I've got some salad here, but we don't eat this salad, I just use it, I collect it and give it to my ducks now and again as a treat. Aubergine's still there, surprisingly it's supposed to die off by now, seems to be doing okay, although I don't think those two aubergine plants will survive come and come the next week or two um, so I'm not sure I'm gonna get any fruit off them uh, so I'm just tidying up all the heavy big heavy uh, roots that you saw me pulling out from the windmill here they're sunflowers they were huge this year I don't think I'm going to grow them next year. They take up a lot of space um, in the garden and they were quite annoying. When you get the heavy gusts, gust, gust winds, they tend to blow sideways and then if they're not strong enough in the ground and you've got them in raised beds, they kind of tilt over slightly. So you have to then string them up and hold them up. And then the bigger they get, the heavier they get. It just becomes, um, for me, it becomes a heavy task. So if I was to grow them next year for the spring, I might grow them on the ground, just on the the ground here in our garden, not in the raised beds. But over here, I was fixing my wooden path. There's more weeds growing there's more weeds growing here today, um, well, <laughs> in October, than there's ever been in the whole year. Um, so I still have a, a wide variety of produce in there. So I'm just going to, what I'm doing in the garden today is I'm just whipping out any weeds that shouldn't be there. Um, and I'm just trying my best just to tidy things up a bit. Some of the tomato uh, plants are dying off now. You can see that they're starting to go a little bit brown. They're still trying to keep themselves um, competing against other produce in the garden. The tomatoes this year, I don't know about anyone else, but we've done extremely well on the tomatoes this year. The beans, however, last year the beans lasted till mid-November. This year they've died off pretty early. Um, I'm not sure if it's because it's too hot and they don't have enough shade. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm not good with uh, where they're supposed to be situated. Um, last year they grew here on this wall and we were uh, kind of in spaghetti hoops of branches and leaves everywhere. It had overgrown severely. Uh, this year we're not having to tackle much. There's not much we're having to tackle with the beans. 
maybe it's because it's a bit dry, I don't know. Um, but the trellis over there that you can see that was also that also had beans growing around from the bottom to the top. They took quite a while to grow, but we did get a lot of beans off the plants. We did extremely well. I'm not complaining, to be honest. It's not really the garden that we actually want. At the moment, we've just rushed putting beds down and putting polytunnels up. Um, there's a different variety, there's a different set layout that we have planned up for this garden that's going to keep a lot of pests, well, keep most pests out. Uh, this is a garden for um, for produce, it's not a garden for sitting in. We have a garden down at the front for sitting in. We're extremely lucky that we have this garden at the top end. Normally what we do after the autumn has passed is we send, we put, we put place, um, we chase our ducks up here into the back garden and they live here the whole winter and they forage for all the bugs, they clean everything up, they keep the grass trimmed and all their poop that they poo, um, their liquid and their, their hard stools goes onto the grass and it feeds the grass feeds the soil and it makes the soil a bit better. The first time we moved in the soil wasn't at all uh, ready for produce to be grown. It was um, far and beyond, uh, it was a bit sandy and uh, clay, clay, clay mixed with sand. Uh, it wasn't good. I think it had too much nitrogen in the soil. Um, which wasn't really good and uh, with clay um, it gets a bit sticky when it's wet and when it, when it dries up in the, the most sunniest days it kind of strangles your roots and it doesn't give your roots any expansion to grow therefore if you have a uh, nice soft um, and uh, breathable soil uh, mixed with compost and manure and uh, blood and bone it's good for the roots. The roots have got a chance to expand. It's like you, if you're 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 needing some vitamins. It's the same scenario. You need these vitamins to stretch um, and to give us some muscles and and good strong growth and teeth and bones, etc. It's the same with a plant. If you're taking care of yourself take care of your garden and I take care of myself I work out I eat healthy although one bad thing that I do is eat a lot of sugar but I think it's because I'm very <laughs> over energetic I'm always always doing things the only time I sit down is when I'm eating at tea time um, I very rarely sit down in the morning when I get up I stand and I drink my tea and I eat my, my breakfast I sit down at tea time and after tea time, once all the dishes and everything else is all cleaned up, then I sit down and I relax for about an hour or two till my food settled, then I have a shower and then I go to bed. So I'm getting to lie down and sit down for most of the night, which is good, so that's the rest that I need. But I like to get out and I like to do things and I like to work. And um, the most important part of the day, the most important part of life is having somewhere where you can grow your own food. If you haven't got a garden and you've got a little patio or even inside your kitchen if you've got a nice window, a good window with a light, ex alter your plants, give them um, weeks on and weeks off. So if you want to grow some herbs on your window ledge mix them around and alter them to suit the weeks for the sunshine. Um, you can also grow some tomato plants. Uh, you could you could try and grow a bleak bean plant but I don't know if that would go down quite well. I mean you could give it a go and grow it up a curtain rail or something. <laughs> it's a silly it's a silly idea but maybe not for some you might even try that. It's not a bad thing. It's not it's not dirty. It's clean. And if it's in your house, it'll definitely stay clean. 
and it probably won't get any pesticides. Although if you have a cat, the cat might be quite entertained by the the long green plant growing in your living room or your kitchen. But it is good to grow your own produce. And I think that there's many more people out there trying new things like hydroponics, aquaponics. That's also a good thing to try up. If you don't have a garden, you can start off in a, in a, in a, um, a garage or you could use UV lights, heat lamps, etc. Anyway, so let's finish this. Uh, let's finish talking about what we were, were discussing because if I, if I don't finish, I'm just going to keep talking and talking and talking. I'm going to explain to you guys why I talk so much and why I get confused. It's something that happened to me a few years ago. I'm going to discuss that in a different video. So that then there are a lot of people who aren't just switching off this channel. They'll watch what I've explained in the description at the top. Okay, so time lapse is on. It's going on. I'm going to fast forward the video. So you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to be tidying up now um, up here in the top garden because I've got things to be doing down at the front. I also have my daily chores to be done, ironing, <coughs> preparing dinner, etc, etc. <coughs> and I think I just got some protein while I'm in the garden. A few flies. <laughs> so this is it guys. This is my wonderful garden and next year it's going to look even more beautiful. Because the more, the more you spend in your garden, the more work you put in, the more spectacular it becomes and the better your plants. The more plants you have surrounding the other plants, protects them. Although don't look up what plants are suited, suitable next to others, what grow well. Um, I know you can Google this plants that grow best next to tomatoes or next to beans, next to potatoes, etc, etc. You have to be careful where you put, where you place your plants. So it's not just a, an easy game, just placing them in pots and putting them into the garden. It's also a bit of um, science involved. You've got to um, read up on a lot of the minerals a lot of the plants that like to be next to each other, the minerals that they give off to other plants, etc. If that's something that you want me to talk about, I can do this for you. It's not a problem. I know a lot about it. Although I think I know enough, but it, there's probably some things that I'm still learning. Okay, so I'll leave you guys with the rest of the video and um, we'll carry on tidying up the garden, moving a few things about. Well, let's get back into it. I'm not going to say goodbye at the end of the video, so I'm just going to say it now. Um, thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you for sharing our channel. Thank you for subscribing. And um, thank you everyone for even making the effort to watch our videos. It means a lot to us. And have a lovely day. Goodbye. Stay tuned, remember, for watching the rest of the video.